I know you've been waiting for this one. No video updates for weeks, just some small hints in the community tab. I just wanted to get it all ready for you, that's all. So, here it is. Let's go. It's been uh, quite the journey, boys and girls. The tutorial is at last finished. And this will be the final episode. After 34 videos, 28 episodes, 16 hours, 18 minutes, 33 seconds. We have reached an end to this tutorial. This one was also better than the last one. At the start of this tutorial, I had a list of things that this game should contain, or this tutorial. Things that one need in order to make a game. And here's the list. One by one we added them and I also talked about how they work. We had to start with the game window, otherwise we can't see anything. And that was in episode 1. Then we added our game loop, which is kinda important in a game. And we did that first in episode 3, but we also improved it later in episode 6. Where we saved the delta time to get a smoother FPS. Animations were used a lot in this game, showing up in episode 5 for the first time, but as you know, we added a lot of animation throughout this tutorial. We also added sounds to our game. We never used that in the last tutorial, so that was cool, and we could do this without adding any external libraries. Which was also one of my rules, no external libraries, no external programs, or anything in that sort. Just basic Java. And we added so much more. The bottom line is, if you followed along, you will now have a better understanding on how to add certain features and mechanics to the game. You will probably need to come back to the videos again at some point. Maybe when you're making your own game and wondered, hmm, how did that game loop work? You only need to know how you will find the information about it, so you can add your version of it into your own game. So going back to videos you watched before is quite the common practice when it comes to making your first game or games. And that's why this channel exists. And of course, there's also a GitHub and even a Discord server for this very purpose. So, what is new in this episode? Quite a lot, actually. This will not be like the other episodes, where I code and you code along with me. This will be more like a video where I show what is possible to create with the already existing code in the game. And just to be clear, this is not all that you can do. You can create really amazing things if you are creative enough. Some methods in this game has been improved or cleaned up, but you would still be able to see the similarities between the old code and the new one. So, let's begin with uh, what's been added. I added two new enemies, the shark and also the starfish, also known as pink star. I also added a pushback and a hit animation for all the enemies. We had the hit animation in the sprite atlas, but we never used it, but now we do. Each enemy have their own unique attacks. It would have been quite boring if all of them did the exact same, just looked different. So the crab, we are familiar with already, he stops and attacks outwards with his claws, in both directions. Nothing new here. The starfish, when he sees the player, he goes into his attack animation, which is rolling. And he rolls for a pre-set amount of time, or if he hits the wall or is about to fall down on edge. You will take damage if he rolls on you. Here is the code for that rolling part. First we have a pre-roll boolean, and that makes sure that we only start to count the roll time when we are in the rolling animation. If the enemy is not rolling, we are pointing counting the duration of the roll. Uh. And we also do not check for the damage to the player when the enemy is in the pre-roll animation. By modifying our move method a little, we can now increase our walk speed and also do a check to see if the enemy rolled into a wall or is next to an edge. If he hits a wall or is close to an edge, a small question mark will pop above his head. It's just a small cute effect, it uh, was in the sprite package, so why not use it? Then of course we have the shark. It will be able to attack the player from about the same distance as the crab. However, the attack is a bit different. 
Once close enough, the shark attacks and lunges towards the player. A little more interesting than just a normal melee attack. The leap forward is similar to the pink star's roll move, just much shorter. The attack is checked during the dash forward. If the shark hits a wall or edge during the attack, an exclamation mark will be displayed above the enemy. Another thing that is new is that when the enemy takes damage from the player, they get pushed back. And yes, they can be pushed down into certain death. For example, the spikes or water. Yeah, the, the water is instant death, both for the player as well as the enemies. Um, there were no swimming animations in the pack, so water equals death. Hashtag game logic. Maybe someone will add swimming animations as a fun project. There is currently five levels. You can add as many as you want. Just remember the rules on how you add levels. The information about how to add more levels is stated in an episode prior to this one, but I will also add it in the descriptions below. Besides the new added enemies and so on, what is new in the code or what has been improved in the code? Well, also a lot. Let's begin with what I remember was the biggest annoyance for me. The way we load levels with the images. Before we had a loop for each type of object, enemy, tiles and so on. And it became wasted time to loop through an image, a level image, several times when we actually just need to do it once. So now we just loop through the image once and for each pixel we test for level data, objects and enemies. First of all this looks way cleaner and it's also easier to read. And if you would like to add more objects, or enemies, or whatever, just a line or two of code and you're done. So yeah, that was a much needed improvement. Another thing that bothered me was that when we load a new level, we also copy the arrays from the level to the manager in question. Well, we're not really copying the arrays, we're just using it in another place. I talked about the difference before in another episode, so I will leave it at that but I will call it copy for now, just to make it simple. But why did we copy the arrays? We could just call our current level and draw or update whatever list we wanted to use. So no need to copy, especially the list that will stay the same size and just have its objects deactivated once the enemy or object have been used. So no more copying, we just call the current level right away. What about bugs in the game? Any bugs fixed? Uh, yeah. There was a bug that I remember when the player was on the same tile, Y tile, as the enemy, and also both in range and in sight for the enemy attack, but because the player was on the edge, the enemy counted that as not in sight. The player's hitbox, X, Y, was above a non-solid tile, above the air, so to speak. The enemy saw that as, well, he's not on the ground, or he's not in sight. But the player's right side was not in air, it was on the ground. And that was fixed by having the enemy try both the left side of the player as well as the right one. If one of those returns true, or is true, then the enemy can attack and tries to attack the player. There were more bugs, but most of them were just sold fast and then forgotten. What else has been added? Well, I talked about the question and exclamation marks. I had some runtime errors with them. Adding to a list while iterating the list can cause some issues at times. That was solved by just creating 10 of each and then setting them to inactive right away. Once we do need one, we just reset it and give it a new position and that worked great. There is trees in the game and there is some grass. The grass is added automatically by checking the current tile when you're loading an image and if it's a tile that you can run on, then grass is added above that one, and there's two types of grass. The trees, on the other hand, is added by you when you are making the level. I also added some particles, rain to be exact. I thought it would look cool, and it does fit the theme. The rain is a 4x1 image that we can draw hundreds of times to get a good cover in the game. I mentioned it in a community post that adding particles by the way we do here is costly in terms of computer power and that is because we are using only the CPU and not the GPU. Particles are best added in something called shaders while working with OpenGL for example. So if your computer is made out of wood and was around the time people invented the wheel, don't use particles. I added a method that allows for rain 20% of the time when a level is loaded. You could just set it to 0% or remove it, it's up to you. 
The ship you see on the first level is used there to make it look like the pirate came by boat to this new land. And no, you cannot walk on it, you die, you know, cause game logic. I didn't find a good place to thank the supporters of this channel at the start of the video, so I will do it here. Tread is still a long term supporter of the channel, and I also noticed that someone donated 5 coffees for me to enjoy. That's some big support right there, thank you very much. I hope he or she won't mind me exchanging that for tea. Best uh, not telling them that. I think I covered most of the biggest new stuff that has been added to the game, but yeah, there is more I didn't cover, of course. I will just leave it up to you to discover and play with. As always, there is a GitHub link where all the code and assets will be found, and a Discord where you can also ask a question or two, or just comment on the game slash tutorial in general. If you found this tutorial useful and or that you learned something new and wish to go the extra mile to show your support, take a look below for a link to my Buy Me A Coffee page. I promise I will not exchange your coffees for tea. Other than that, I think it's time to end this episode with a big thank you from my side. The support you have shown and the kind words you have been leaving behind is very heartwarming. Thank you so much. It tells me that I'm heading in the right direction when it comes to this. I would also like to thank Pixel Frog for his work. All the graphics you see is part of a large asset pack he had made public, which is really, really cool. It would have been very hard to try to find an asset pack this big that also would have been as good as this one. So yeah, big thanks to him. The music used is by SVL on YouTube slash itch.io. Other sounds is some random effects from freesound.org. I think that is pretty much it. If you have any questions, post them in the comment section below or on Discord. Thank you all for making this a great tutorial. You were not the only ones who learned a thing or two. I sure did as well. Now I'm off to drink some of that tea. <clears throat> I mean coffee. Take care now and have a wonderful day. Bye.